I'm just taken by all the symbols of joy we have in our midst this morning. The Advent wreath, as there are these increasing flames, the light increases as we draw closer to Christmas. That is a symbol of joy. This beautiful pink rose symbolizing new life, that is a symbol of joy. Nova's contributions to our service, that is a great joy. It is indeed a joy to be here on this day. Five years, whew, and what a five years it has been. I am grateful. Let's pray together. O oh Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. O oh God, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. John isn't called by the names we were accustomed to in today's gospel passage. In the Gospel of Matthew, he's referred to as John the Baptist. In the Gospel of Mark, he's John the Baptizer. And in the Gospel of Luke, he's John the son of Zechariah. Yet in today's scripture, he's just John. Just a man sent from God. In today's scripture, his primary descriptor is a witness. John is clear with those who question him that he's not the Messiah. He is not Elijah reincarnate. He is not a prophet. He is just John. One thinks of the the words to that song in the Barbie movie. For those of you who saw it, I'm just Ken. He's just John. And that's enough. <laughs> just John. A witness to bring testimony to the light. I don't know any other way to preach these texts today than as a witness. I tried to write about 10 different sermons this week, but at the end of the day, I don't know any other way on this Sunday of joy in this complicated season of Advent, on this pastoral anniversary, then to offer a piece of my own testimony, to do some of my own witnessing. I don't know any other way this morning than to speak to you as just Sarah and to tell you a little bit of what this year has been for me. I found out that I was pregnant for the first time at the very beginning of this year. Noah and I were so excited. We were like those who dream, as the psalmist says, imagining what it would look like to welcome a baby in the fall. We started thinking about where the nursery would go, what it would mean for our flow of the year, what it would mean for our work calendars. But then we went in for our first appointment. And I saw the look on the doctor's face. And before she even said anything, I knew that something was wrong. And sure enough, a few days later, after various tests, we were told that the pregnancy wasn't viable. I got the call as I was driving home from work. And my doctor, she was so kind, she said, I can tell you're driving, you should, you should pull over. And so I did. I pulled over into a parking lot in front of a Chinese restaurant. I don't think I'll ever forget what it looked like. 
And I just wept. And I wept. And I wept. I miscarried in mid-February. And it was mentally and emotionally and physically painful. And I grieved. I grieved for the loss of what could have been. I grieved for the loss of what I dreamed 2023 would look like. As anyone who has grieved knows, grief is a process, right? There were days when I didn't want to do anything. I didn't want to get out of bed. And then there were days where I felt like myself, more or less. And I slowly returned to something like the normal routine. While knowing that my body and my heart would never be quite the same. Then one day in June, I was out to lunch with some of my friends at one of my favorite Thai restaurants in Uptown. And I suddenly realized that I didn't feel very good. I was really tired, <laughs> really tired. And my pad thai didn't taste the way that my pad thai normally tastes. And I'd only felt that way one other time in my life. And I thought to myself, could it be? And so I biked myself to Walgreens and then I biked myself home. And about 10 minutes later, I pulled a very bewildered Noah off of a conference call because sure enough, I was pregnant for the second time in a year. It has been so profound to celebrate this Advent while pregnant. For one, the Christmas story is a lot more real to me now. I have just the smallest understanding of what it might have been like for Mary. The anxieties, the discomfort. These are the only shoes I can wear right now. The fears, the delight, and the whole concept of preparing for the birth, of preparing the way, it resonates differently for me this year. But it has also been such a profound season because I feel these scriptures so deeply. When I read Psalm 126, when I read the words, may those who sow in tears reap with shouts of joy, I hear my story. The Lord has indeed done great things for me. The Lord has done great things for me, yes, in the gift of this pregnancy, but, but that's, not, that's not all. That's not even all that I'm talking about. God has done great things for me all year long. I have been surrounded by God's love, even when I couldn't see it. I have been held and fed and supported by people who have truly been the hands and feet of Christ to me. There are several words for joy in Hebrew, but the word used in Psalm 126 is rena. And rena means a shout of joy. It's more than happiness. It's more than excitement. It is a bone-deep, fully embodied cry of joy. And there have been evenings recently when I lie on the couch and I feel this baby kick and I just start laughing to myself. And I am filled with Rena, for my weeping has become a shout of joy. 
This is the way of our human lives. We have moments of sorrow and we have moments of bone deep joy. They can even exist side by side in the same moment. And God is present in all of it. I know each of us could trace the pattern of Psalm 126 in our individual lives. We could trace our weeping and our shouts of joy, but we can also trace it as a community. These five years of pastoring have been nothing like what I imagined. Nothing! (laughs) Pastor Veronica and I became your pastors during Advent of 2018. And I remember it as a time filled with so much excitement. I remember our installation service when Reverend Dr. Jean Porter King preached about how together, all of us, we would create new wine to fill new wineskins. Together, we were like those who dreamed we were so ready to step into a new season together. But then, One year later, we experienced the beginning of COVID-19. We had to change everything about the way we did church. Everything. We learned to Zoom. I didn't know Zoom before, before then. We learned to do that. And we celebrated communion with whatever we had on hand, isolated in our homes. I still have a picture of all of us from Palm Sunday waving our little potted plants around. (laughs) We mourned the passing of dear staff and members without the, the gathering rituals to which we were accustomed. In the past five years, We have lived and worshipped through so much. We have lived and worshipped through acts of horrific police brutality and racism, 43 mass shootings, increased political polarization, the overturning of Roe versus Wade, which I just have to say, after the year I have had, I have never been more passionate that Each person has the sacred right, the sacred right to make decisions about their body and have access to robust reproductive medical care. I am so grateful I live in a place where I had access to that. Not everyone does. In the past five years, we've seen our city continue to struggle with gun violence and food insecurity and the need for housing for neighbors new and old. We've witnessed the outbreak of two major wars, and those are just the ones that make the headlines. There are conflicts that have been ongoing in places that that never quite make it to the front page. We have gone out weeping. But that's not all. That's not all. We've also learned how to be together while physically apart. Babies have been born into this congregation and we've watched them grow until they're big enough to toddle up and down the aisles. We've seen our young people mature and follow their interests to college and beyond. We've celebrated milestone birthdays and anniversaries and awards that have been given. We've held book signings and concerts and cookouts. We've welcomed at least 20 new members. Together we can say that God has done great things for us at Hyde Park Union Church. And we should say it. God has done great things for us. We have to say it. We must bear witness to the light, to the joy, because it is there. And that is a gift that we can give to one another and to the weary world. 
The opening words of the Gospel of John right before today's passage. Listen to this, this beautiful poetry. They read, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him, not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life. And the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness. And the darkness did not overcome it. The light shines in the darkness and the darkness did not overcome it. I keep having this thought <laughs> during my pregnant advent. I love this child growing within me so much. So much. <laughs> so much I'm willing to rip my body open and give of myself and forego sleep and who knows what else some of you do I'm gonna learn <laughs> just so that this life can be here and yet this is just a glimpse of how much God loves us God loves us so much that God came to live with us God came to live with us in the most vulnerable way as a little baby. God came to experience every inch of sorrow and of joy with us. God came as the Word made flesh, Emmanuel, God with us. That's how big the love is. And that that's a light that shines in the darkness. And the darkness, it cannot put it out. That's a light that lets us shout with joy. And that's a light that lets us proclaim, for God has indeed done great things for us. Amen. Amen.